How's it going everyone? Today we're gonna be talking about what it means to have passing priv- My cat is going freaking crazy right now. We're gonna be talking about passing privilege, but not just passing privilege. Some of the things I've encountered when I've started passing more and more as cis in society and how that can both be a good thing, but also a double-edged sword. I wanna start off by saying that I think the concept of passing privilege or um, cis-assuming, being cis-assuming is kind of detrimental to what it means to be trans. I know a, long, a couple years ago, passing privilege is something that was almost promoted in the uh, trans community because we wanted so bad to be accepted by society, but I see a more positive outlook. Before it seemed like trans people were constantly trying to appeal to people that hate us, but I think the movement is going towards more of accepting yourself, accepting ourselves within the community, and expecting the greater society that have these implicit biases against trans people to change their biases to be more accepting of who we are. That kind of movement is honestly much for the better because as I have transitioned medically, I've come to realize that not everybody has the ability to medically transition, whether it, for, whether it be for monetary reasons and even medical reasons as well. Not everyone has the ability to medically transition because of underlying illnesses, chronic illnesses, and some people just don't have access to things like surgeons. So from moving from the trying to be as cis-assuming possible to accepting me as a trans person shift in how we want you know, people to accept trans people is honestly beautiful and I really, really appreciate that. But I do want to acknowledge that I do have cis assuming privilege because I have a beard, I have a dark voice, I've medically transitioned, I've had top surgery. I mean, when I go out into the regular world, everybody thinks I'm a cis man. Another thing I really think about is the fact that I'm not just assumed to be a cis man, but a cis man of color. So that comes with my own intersectionalities of either gaining from privilege, but also being discriminated against. When people see me, they see a brown bearded man and it comes with a lot, a lot of mistreatment when I interact with regular society. One thing that I've really noticed in the last three years that I've medically transitioned is that there is an emphasis on my beard, almost as if my beard is a source of masculinity when people perceive me as a person. And it even gets to the point where cis men use my beard as a way to affirm my gender identity which is incredibly problematic i've had situations where uh, a group of cis men would tell me that i look very much like a man because i have a beard while their actual cis colleague who doesn't have a beard is somehow inferior to me and they use it as a way to make me feel like they think they're making me feel good by affirming who I am as a man with a beard. But at the same time, they use me as a way to emasculate their friend. I don't know. That just doesn't sit right with me for a lot of reasons because beards are not something that's universal among what it means to, to be someone assigned male at birth because of the fact that there are many subgroups of people that don't grow beards. Like even certain subgroups of white men never grow beards. So why is it that when I have a beard, it becomes a way to emasculate other men? It, it, it's just, it just uh, I feel like you can make a case study about this. I've also gotten a lot of comments from the trans community, trans masculine community itself about how so many of them see me and they tell me that they, they get really jealous because they can't grow a beard, but I have almost a full beard and it's still, you know, coming in. And I constantly feel like I have to debrief with my friends who don't feel like they're masculine enough because they don't have a beard because I, I'm South Asian. <laughs> like, 
it's in my genes, it's in my family. My dad has a full beard, my brother has a full beard, my grandfather has a full beard. So it's almost expected for me to have a full beard. I mean, so like there's a lot of both privilege, but also I feel like I have to do a lot of, I feel like I have to do a lot of emotional labor for other people who don't feel affirmed enough because I, they don't fit the traditional, you know, perceptions of manhood. I say this in context to having these discussions with predominantly white trans masculine individuals who uh, try to, who feel bad for not having a beard, but at the same time, they're not going, they're not looking at the intersections of me being a brown person. I mean, it's just in my genetics to have this feature. I also feel like no one really understands the fact that it does also come with a lot of bias. Whenever I go to the airport, I'm always racially profiled. I'm always going through extra TSA security checks. And the fact that I'm trans makes it even worse because they have to pat me down and then they get weird about me not having stuff down there. I don't pack. And if I were to pack, it would set off the detectors everywhere. So there is a lot of bias that I have to deal with in the world because I'm coded as a brown man. And what makes it worse, being a brown trans man adds additional hardships that I have to go through with dealing with regular society. I kind of now want to shift the conversation to now that I am to the greater society seen as a cis person, how do people react when they, when I tell them I'm trans or how people perceive my sexuality before they know I'm trans? When it comes to people assuming my sexuality before they realize I'm trans, a lot of people have realized have the assumption that I'm either gay or bisexual, which is interesting to me because for a long time, I was only interested in women, but now that I realize that I'm more on the bisexual spectrum, it fits better. But it also makes me think about what about me makes people think that I'm a queer man. I don't know, I haven't really figured out the answer to that question. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot and I think maybe it's because of the way I talk to people. I'm not overly aggressive. I'm always very sweet. I give off what a lot of my friends say boy next door personality. Like I'm always cheery and I'm always nice. So maybe that's being perceived as queer uh, to the outside world. But I want to know what y'all's thoughts are on this. But put it down in the comments. Like why do people think I'm more on the gay bisexual spectrum <laughs> now that I'm getting coded? More as, as a more as a cis assuming man. I don't know. Maybe it's because I have a great fashion sense as well. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but usually nowadays, when I tell people that I'm trans, there's been a shift on how people react to it. I remember before I medically transitioned, within the first year of medically transitioning, when I used to tell people I'm trans, they'd be like, "Oh, you're trans. Oh, wow. Okay. He him pronouns. Yes, king." I mean, they used to be a lot like that. They would immediately understand that I was someone assigned female at birth transitioning to male. And depending on how good they are about accepting pronouns and gender identity, they would try their best to, you know, be correct. But now when I tell people that I am transgender, uh, generally I get two very problematic uh, answers to when I tell people that I'm transgender and yes there's a large group of people that are really good about it but some of the times I get a lot of really really inappropriate responses and the first one is they say something that they think is a compliment which in actuality is not a compliment and they say something like wow you know when I met you I didn't even think you were trans and if you're an ally watching this video right now and you're thinking, oops, I definitely said that to another trans person before, I'm not going to be mad about it. But at the same time, you have to understand that that's a very, 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 very loaded statement to make because it puts the assumption that you can 
figure out if someone is trans walking down the street, which isn't which isn't true. That's a myth. That's a myth created by the media. It's a myth created to ostracize trans people. You can't tell who or who isn't trans walking down the street. There's no such thing as looking trans. And the second thing, which is far less common that people assume about me now when I tell them I'm trans, that I think is even worse than the first assumption people make about me, but I also think it's hilarious, <laughs> is that people think I'm a trans woman. There's been at least two times in the last year that someone has assumed that. They almost never know how to respond. <laughs> like, I almost never know how to respond to it. I'm just like, uh, I think you hit the mark on that one. I'm a trans man. And they're like, oh, oh. I don't know. It's awkward, but it's it's inherently the same problematic reasons why people say I, they don't they, they don't think I look trans um, because they have these preconceived notions of what trans people should look like. Anyways, that's the end of my little self-reflection video. I do want to acknowledge that now that I do have cis assuming privilege as a man in society, I do have more privilege than I did when I wasn't cis-assuming. So I, I really want to make that clear in this video, but I also want to be able to express the intersections of what it means to be a cis-assuming trans man for a brown person like me. There's a lot of nuances that I have to deal with in regular society. I am still a minority, uh, regardless of whether or not I am perceived as a cisgender man. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this entertaining. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you share this video with someone that you love, that you think will enjoy this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life, and I'll see you on the next video. This has been.